Okay, so we're back here. We're doing some reamping now. So this time, instead of using my redoubtable micro cube, which uh, is quite awesome, I must say, uh, this time we brought out our really super big gun here, the Fender keyboard amp that we have here. I'm not sure what it's doing here, but we have it. Uh, it's kind of cool though, actually, because uh, a lot of times we find that we want to go ahead and take digital stuff that's in the digital world a lot of times we, we, we accumulate a lot of digital stuff and then we listen to it back and we go, wow, this sounds really digital. Man, I wish it just had a little, I don't know, a little, you know, texture to it. So one of the ways that you can solve that problem is to do a simple thing called reamping. We can basically take our track that's in the DAW and we can send it out through the patch bay and send it out to this patch panel over here bring it back out, and then what we'll use is a direct box. Uh, and we're actually, we're gonna use the direct box sort of the opposite way that it's intended to be used. The direct box usually is intended to be used that we plug a, a high impedance input into it, like a guitar cable from a guitar, and then we use that to, to get the impedance lower to make it so that it can be a good line level signal, and also to have a, a proper impedance in our line. So we usually use it that way, but this way we're using it backwards. We're actually going to take our track and we're going to bring it back through the transformer the other way and it's going to come back out and go into the amplifier. Uh, now usually, we don't usually use a direct box for this purpose because uh, they have a thing called a reamp box that you can use now and reamp box has, a, has a, a transformer that's more suitable for this thing because it's a pretty hot level coming back. So. What we want to do though is get that level sort of set a little bit better uh, and then we're going to send it out here through our direct box and I've got it basically coming out of, uh, out of one of these patch points that is not one of the preamp patch points. It's one of our triple digit ones that we have so it's 110. So in the patch bay I basically said okay I want to make a send in and, and Pro Tools and that send is going to come out the number 19 on the patch bay, number 19 anti ammo output on the patch bay. I can send that out, I can then patch that with the patch cable, do that to 110 over here on my patch panel, and voila, I am now getting my signal from the DAW to the amplifier. So this is kind of cool because what we can do is obviously we can take a guitar uh, track that we had before if we had the direct signal, and we can put that back into the amp and, or whatever amplifiers we have available. Let's say your buddy has a really super great uh, expensive amplifier. So you can just go ahead and take this guitar part that you recorded earlier direct and then feed that into the amplifier and record that. That's pretty cool. Uh, one of the things that we like to do a lot of times is take keyboards, for instance. A lot of times digital keyboards, very digital. So what we'll do is we'll take them out of the DAW and we'll throw them into an amplifier and dirty them up a little bit and then mix that back in with the keyboard and usually what that'll do is that'll help just get a sort of a different kind of a texture that really kind of helps us get de-digitized sometimes because we can get a little over digitized. This has one big uh, 15 inch speaker in it and it also has a horn in it. I'm not really concerned about the horn, I don't really give a crap about that. I'm mostly going to get the speaker and so I've got my usual cast of characters here. I've got my Royer 121, the ribbon. I've got my 4033 uh, AT. I've got my uh, RE20. I've got my KM184. I've got my good old redoubtable SM57. All those are lined up. I'm not really trying to go for a lot of proximity effects, so I pulled them back from the surface because I'm also going to get a little loud here. I decided uh, I'm going to feed a kick drum and a snare drum into this. I'm going to try to get some more kick drum, just a little more texture from the amp. And I've tuned the amp in, I'm getting a little more low end, a little bit more mid range, I've rolled off a little high end, I don't really care about the horn. Uh, and I'm gonna see what I can get with these microphones. And they're all pretty much set at the same distance away, about uh, six or to eight inches. And then on top of that, I went ahead and, um, well I'll show you. I have a couple other microphones over here that um, I went ahead and, and put out uh, 414 and our good buddy the 87 and they're further back they're an Omni I want to see if I like what happens with this room I haven't really heard this room so much 
So I'm going to go ahead and kick this kick and snare into this amplifier, blast it into this room, record it on all these microphones and these back microphones, and uh, so you can see I got it coming out, doing the kick and the snare. Okay, we're ready to do the reamp here. So I've got the tracks put up here. I went ahead and got I, all of them pulled over here. I've got them the preamp set. The one thing I did realize though is that since I'm doing a bit louder thing with this amplifier, and I'm I probably shouldn't be doing too much louder than this for the Royer. You don't really want to expose a Royer rib into too much of this kind of SPL, but it's I think I'm still on the good side of it. So. But still, be very be more careful with the, the with the Royer than these other ones, certainly than the Dynamics. Uh, so I have these out there. I've gone ahead and um, I've adjusted all the levels. I, I went ahead and, and make, got everything good and flat across. A couple of these needed pads, so I put pads on them. So sometimes if you you'll, you'll put the microphone up there, you'll have the preamp at zero, and you're hitting red. What do you do? Uh, that's when you reach for your pad. So in our preamps here, we have these little the, the pad button here right above our um, our 48V our phantom power. So we just activate the pads, and then we can use our uh, our gains just a little bit inside of that and sort of fine tune it. But but using a little 10 dB pad. So we'll we're not above using that. So everything's ready to go. How did I get from the DAW to the panel? And I mentioned earlier that I used the patch bay. And the way I did this is, is down here on the one, two, three, four, fifth level of the patch bay, you'll find your Andiamo MADI outputs. Those are direct outputs coming from the DAW. So if you want to just, if you decide that you want to take something off of track whatever, track 22, and send it somewhere, you can go to the track 22, and you can send that out of the patch bay pretty much anywhere you want to, to an effect, but you can send it to the patch panel, as I showed you earlier. So what I did is I've got, I went ahead and chose 20, so the Andy Ammo 20, and I went in here, and I took my, my kick and my snare, and I made, I went to the sends, and I assigned the sends to the Andy Ammo you have to sort of go down here and look for it. The Andiamo Mati line output 20. So I got that set up. I made sure that my send is activated. So I, I turned it up and to, up to Unity and made sure that the kick, one of those was on the kick and one of those was on the snare. Now I can adjust the levels of the kick to the snare from here as to how it hits the amplifier. So if I'm getting too much snare out there, I'll just back it down here. Let's put a little more kick. In fact, it was getting a little too much snare. So I think I'm going to pack, I'm going to back down the snare about yay so much and I'm gonna we'll leave the kick down where it is so okay so that should give me a, a kind of what I want now if I really wanted to get technical I'd probably do the kick separately and the snare separately but just for the sake of of, uh, of argument here I'm just gonna go ahead and do both of them together and we'll bring this up and I'm going to we'll hear what all these microphones have to say about this so let's get everybody into record and let's get busy Hit three. You're getting everybody. Levels are looking good, so I'm going to let this run. Uh, I don't necessarily have to listen to the whole thing with you. Uh, we'll come back and look at this here in just a moment. Welcome to our reamp session through the kick and the snare back into the big Fender keyboard amplifier, which you know is what it is. It's just it's basically a speaker that's moving some air. It's got a little horn in it. 
a lot of times what we want to do is take a lot of our digital sounding stuff and make it more analog. I mean, the, the act of taking something that was born in a digital circuit and bringing it so that it turns into air molecules doing squishy, squishy, squish, and have that being picked up by a microphone, that does something to a sound that kind of is significant, can be cool, I think is actually useful. And the whole idea of reamping, um, once you get used to it, is really easy to do it. It's a lot of fun. And you can reamp anything, literally anything. Anything that's on the track, you can reamp it. If drums are fun to do, basses work great to, to get that extra bass tone that you might need, that mid range thing that you might need to get the bass to speak. Obviously, reamping guitars, we can do that all day long. Reamping keyboards, oh my goodness. A digital organ, when you put it back through a speaker into a room and get it off a good microphone, it really makes a big difference. Something about that waveform translating into, again, air molecules being activated and then captured on a microphone. Uh, use a reamp box, as I mentioned before, though, when possible. You can use, yes, the direct box like we have at the studio, but the reamp boxes are better for this purpose. They are designed to handle the level and, and have a better transformer ratio that's more copacetic for doing this. So I recommend if you do a lot of reamping to get a reamp box, I think you can get one between 60, 80 bucks. Here's our reamped drums, kick and snare. And I'm just gonna go ahead and solo through them. And, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and open it up with the drums, with the whole band playing. And we're gonna add that in and just sort of see if we can perceive these different reamped drums when we add them into the mix to see if they make a difference, and a difference that we like to do something to the drums that we're happy with. So first, the soloing. Here is the SM57, our good old SM57. R20. Now granted, this is a very mid-rangey sound. U87. And this is this is back in the room a little bit. In Omni. I can use that. Okay, 414. Not quite as far back as the U87. In Omni. Now we're talking. So I, in my opinion, maybe some of these closer ones might be good for adding a little bit of extra oomph to the, the kick drum and stuff. But these further ones, the U87 and the 414, all of a sudden lighting up the room a little bit more, getting that Omni stuff, uh, I'm, I might be able to use that more. So here's what we're going to do now. I'm just going to go ahead and bring the drums back in, the band back in, and then we're just going to add these in one at a time. And I'll announce them as we go and see what you think. Okay, none of them. 57. I'll bring it back out again. I'm just going to bring the 57 back in and out a little bit so you can hear it. So coming in. Switch to that 184. Okay, let's crank this up a little more. Can we take it back out again? It's subtle. Listen to the kick. Kick got a little bit more oop, didn't it? Take it out again. And there, but then bring it back in. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's try the 4033. There's a the solo. I'll take it out. kick and snare. 
Okay, let's let's hear the Royer. Let's turn it up. That's that, except actually, that actually when I turn that up, I can hear the other side of the rhythm. Okay, let's try RE20. That makes the, the snare go doink. I'll take it out. There's a snare without. Put it in. Hear that. Okay, let's try the at 414. I'll turn it up. I know you can hear what that's doing to the kick and snare. It's adding extra sort of impact to the kick for sure. And, I'm, and the snare at times, each microphone is doing in certain different ways with different frequency bumps and dips. So each of these has a different sort of way of looking at this. And what's great about a distorted sound, and it was pretty low mid-rangey, granted, and mid-rangey, not a lot of high end. We were able to get lots of different looks and reads from these different microphones. And that's what you'll probably do when you're doing reamping. You'll have, there's no excuse not to put a, a bunch of microphones up when you do a reamp and just pick the best one. One thing you always want to do is sort of take the moment, find the right microphone for the job, for what you want it to do. And when we have you at the Haas Media Studio again, uh, we look forward to letting you have that opportunity to get the microphones out, hands-on, find out for yourself what they can do. Hopefully these sessions have given you some sort of an idea of what we have available for you. Anyways, hope this helps, gets you down the road for understanding a little bit more about reamping, using lots of different microphones to get electric guitars, acoustic guitars, pianos, what have you. Thanks a lot.